Hey, what's up everybody? Salmanic Ball here. You can find me on Twitter at Salmanic Ball. Welcome to my channel. On this channel, we talk about cloud native technologies, Kubernetes, machine learning, and much more. This is the first video in the MLOps series. Very briefly, MLOps or ML operations, as you're all aware, is all about increasing automation in your ML lifecycle. So you could increase the quality of your machine learning workflows running in production systems. We have a lot coming up in the MLOps series. For example, we will look at how you could take your existing machine learning pipelines and automate them, or how you can serve a train model. We'll also be comparing a number of ML ops tools that are available to us. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you'd like to hear more about them. Since we've been talking about Kubernetes on this channel, I thought it might be better to start with Kubeflow. Kubeflow is an open source project with an awesome community behind it. The project is dedicated to making deployments of ML workflows on Kubernetes simple, portable, and scalable. But let's take a look at the problem at hand. If you ever wanted to train your machine learning model, before you even start, you need to get hold of your training data. You also need some test data. You need a model, the one that you're going to train, and also you need to evaluate what you just trained. And that's the things that data scientists care about the most. But in reality, there's a few more things that you really need to look at. How do I collect that data? How do I do feature extract? How do I verify what I've got? Do some configuration. Make sure I have enough resources to run the model where I'm trying to run to train it. I need to set up the infrastructure to serve the model that I've trained. I need to look at monitoring. I need to look at analysis tools. So there's quite a lot that I need to consider. So it turns out, if you want to be a data scientist or a machine learning engineer, you need to learn some development. You also need to learn operations and infrastructure. And you need to definitely learn some data science. Expectation for us is to now have some superpowers. One of the technologies that helps us in overcoming some of these problems is containers. What is a container? I can take a runtime like Python, add my code files or any other configuration files. I can also add external dependencies. In this case, I've got TensorFlow and package it all up in a Linux container. If you have one or two containers, you can run them without any problems. But what happens if you have many, many more? This is where Kubernetes comes in. Well, what is it? It's a container orchestrator, a place where you can run your containers. Here I'm showing you a cluster. We have two worker nodes and one control plane that is in charge of running your applications. So anytime an application needs to be deployed, all Kubernetes does is scans the infrastructure and places it. Another container comes in, it scans the infrastructure and checks where the best place is to place it, and it places it. And you can keep sending it applications which are running inside a container. They might have different memory and CPU requirements, but they can get deployed either in wherever the infrastructure allows it to. So we'll find the best fit and keep deploying it, keep deploying it until everything is packed together. So that's briefly what Kubernetes is. Now it's time to introduce you to Kubeflow. Kubeflow is an open community driven project and it makes it easy to deploy and manage ML stack on Kubernetes. Basically the issues that we discussed about previously, some of the tools in here help us manage them. Kubeflow is an ML toolkit for Kubernetes. You can run it wherever you can run Kubernetes. You can run it in the cloud of your own choice. You could, if you want to, you can run it on your machine as well. You can use Minikube or they also have Minikf that you can check it out. Or you can deploy it on the on-prem Kate's cluster, or you can do it on OpenShift. Basically, what I'm trying to say is you can run this wherever you can run Kubernetes. I have added a link in the description, which includes instructions on how you can install Kubeflow on your own cluster or on your own machine. So Kubeflow is vast. There's quite a few tools in there, but I will mention some components. Your Kubeflow deployment includes support for spawning Jupyter Lab notebooks. There are notebooks, data scientists, and machine learning engineers used to experiment with data and models. q pipelines is the one that is my most favorite tool out of all of them. q pipelines are reusable end-to-end -end ML workflows built using Kubeflow pipeline SDK. And the SDK is in Python. Yes, Python. You can write the pipelines in Python. You don't have to write them in YAML or any other configuration language. You can do it in Python. Great times. It's an end-to-end -end orchestration. You can write a full end-to-end -end ML pipeline of downloading data from various sources, cleaning it, training the model, prediction, and serving it. You can make components that can be reused in multiple pipelines. So Kubeflow comes with a number of operators. Operators are software extensions to Kubernetes that make use of custom resources 
to manage applications and other components. Well, these operators let you use functionality of deep learning and machine learning frameworks that we like, such as PyTorch, MXNet, and others. You can use Catit for automated tuning of machine learning models and the hyperparameters and architecture. So this project called Metadata, the goal of this project is to help Qflow users understand and manage machine learning workflows by tracking and managing the metadata that the workflows produce. Metadata means things like information about the executions that you've done or the models or the data sets and other artifacts such as files and objects that form the input and output of the components of your ML workflow. Basically, it's like source control, but for your machine learning resources. KF Serving provides the framework where you can serve your models. Qflow also comes with some of your favorite frameworks for training pre-installed. Here's a list of few. We've got TensorFlow, PyTorch, Scikit-Learn, MXNet. So we just discussed the main tools that come with Qflow and their purposes. I think it's beneficial to see Qflow in action, maybe some of its functionality very briefly, not all of them. What you'll see now is a UI for Qflow. The two things that we'll check out are JupyterLab notebooks and Qflow pipelines. When you install Qflow in any cluster, this is the UI you're presented with. I'm actually running this on mini KF and I can, as soon as I log in, this is the dashboard. So one of the things that I wanted to show you was notebooks. So I click on notebooks. Here's one I created earlier. So this is JupyterLab notebooks. If I connect to one of these now and load me the familiar JupyterLab UI that you've seen before. You can go ahead here and create your own notebooks. You can create your own Python files, .r files. You have a terminal where you can do anything with it. So one of the things I wanted to show you was what a pipeline Python file would look like. Now this is just normal Python. It uses a library called Qflow pipeline. And the starting point of this pipeline is the definition where we define what the pipeline flow would look like. In this case, this is quite a basic pipeline. What we're saying is we need to run these two methods one after the other. All we're trying to do is print a message and then move on to the next one. And then you can see this in print op, I'm running a container image. In this case, it is Alpine 3.6. But in your case, it could be a container that you wrote yourself. And once you've written this file, you can compile this into a YAML file. And the YAML file, you can upload it into Qflow pipelines. Once we've written it and compiled it, we can head over to the pipeline dashboard. We will look into pipeline in a lot more detail in upcoming videos, but here I just wanted to give you a brief view. So here's what a pipeline actually looks like. All these steps are the ones that have been defined within the pipeline themselves. This is a different one example I'm showing you. If I click on one of this, I can see some of the inputs and outputs, what the image is that's using, what the arguments that are being passed on. Once I'm happy with what the flow looks like, I can create a run and give it a run name. Let's just call it test and we run it. This will execute the pipeline as you expected it to. So here's one that I did earlier. All this one does is flips a coin and you can go into the logs. You can view the logs, what it was, heads or tail, and then it prints the information out. This is quite a basic pipeline, but you know there's more. Let's say you have a model that you trained using a neural network. This model predicts which item of clothing is being presented to it in an image. Now you want to share this model with your team, with the other teams or with outside world. Ideally, you want to create an API where requests can be sent via various sources to make prediction against your model. And this is where KF Serving comes in. When you install KF Serving on your cluster, it comes with a few prerequisites. We already know that it's running on a Kubernetes cluster. It also installs a service mesh called Istio. The term service mesh is used to describe the network of microservices that make up such applications and the interactions between them. As the service mesh grows in size and complexity, it can become harder to understand and manage. Its requirements can include discovery of your services, load balancing, failure recovery, metrics, and monitoring. A service mesh solves all these problems and can do other things like, you know, A-B testing or canary rollouts or rate limiting, access control end-to-end -end authentication, plus much, much more. Then on top of it, we have Knative. Knative is an open API and runtime environment that enables you to run your serverless workloads anywhere you choose. It offers features like scale to zero and auto-scaling. After we managed to install all of that, Kubernetes, Istio, and Knative, Kserving is installed on top of this. 
and cave servering provides what's known as a Kubernetes custom resource definition for serving machine learning models on arbitrary frameworks. And it aims to solve production model serving use case by providing performant, high abstraction interfaces for common ML frameworks like TensorFlow, XGBoost, Scikit-Learn, PyTorch. It gives you things like auto-scaling. So imagine if a lot of requests for your model come in, it's it is able to scale up and serve all those requests. And it can also do health checking, server configuration. And what you essentially get is an endpoint to which you can send a request and get your prediction back. We'll look at this and pipelines in a lot more detail in upcoming videos. Hyperparameters are the variables that control model training process. For example, learning rate or number of layers in a neural network or number of nodes in each layer. And what hyperparameter really is, is a process of optimizing the values of these variables to improve the predictive accuracy of the model. You know, you can do it manually. You can add more nodes, you can add more layers, you can add more connections, but of course that's very time consuming. With CATIB, you can use automated hyperparameter tuning to optimize to a target variable, also called the objective metric. So that was my whistle stop tour of Kubeflow. You got to see the main components of Kubeflow. Uh, we checked out JupyterLab notebooks and also we saw some pipelines. Hopefully you get to see where it comes in handy. I will be releasing more videos on the MLOps series and others too. So please consider subscribing, sharing with your friends and your colleagues. If you'd like to get in touch, you can find me on Twitter at SolmanIqbal or you can leave a comment below and also let me know what you'd like to see. Thank you very much for watching.